This is the Daily Growth Discipleship Podcast. I'm Josh. And I'm Chris. As you drive through a long mountain tunnel, there's a moment when the light from the outside world begins to slowly brighten the walls of the tunnel around you. Sometimes coming out of a dark night of the soul can feel the same way. You fight to see the light and get back to a time when all you knew was bright daylight. But the darkness doesn't always lift immediately. In this chapter, Gretchen tells about her experience coming out of the dark night of the soul and the growth she experienced as a result of it. And the dark night of the soul is something that all Christians will experience at one time or another if they are earnestly seeking a relationship with Jesus. And it's not something that we as Christians should fear. In fact, it's a little counterintuitive, but we should really embrace the dark nights of the soul. And Gretchen's story really helps illustrate why. Instead of God forsaking or abandoning us, as it oftentimes feels, what we find once we come through those is that God is often at work in our lives in ways that we couldn't possibly have imagined. Do you remember when the fog started to lift? And uh, if so, what was sort of the the moments that you that you had going through there where you started to see some of the light and you were like, okay, well, I think maybe things are starting to get better or um, well, maybe toward, rekindled that intimacy. Yeah, towards the end of the time I began, I actually found uh, some authors that talked about, um, you know, the dark night of the soul. And another uh, author I think I gained some insight from, if I'm remembering her name right, Catherine Marshall. And I think Mm -hmm. she termed it a stripping. Yep. And and I would agree with that. Basically, I felt like it was God emptied me of myself. It's a very humiliating time because it's almost like he pulls his hand back and you see how fruitless you are apart from his spirit. Mm -hmm. That it is only from God, through God, and to God that anything of worth happens in your life. And you can be working yourself to death and you're not going to see any good from it unless his spirit in it is involved. And so I, the way I knew I was coming out of it, I began to start feeling more of a connection with the Lord. And um, I can remember reading a devotion in, towards the end of January in um, Streams in the Desert. And it talked about, you know, uh, basically God calling his people out and telling them to go and take possession of the land that he was, you know, that it was time for them to enter in. And it was when I read that, I I recognized through the Spirit that I think this is coming to a close, that I am getting back to, I won't say normal, because I don't think you're ever the same after having gone through it. Uh, I agree. Um, You, and, and I learned the more I squirmed, I sort of knew the more I fight this, I bet the longer this is going to take me. <laughs> I'm so goal oriented that, you know, I'm trying to figure it out. And I can just remember thinking I've got to be still. I just need to let him have his way and be still. And that what became, became my game plan just daily that let him do what he was going to do and trust him to do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, as I came out, it was, I was so glad to start feeling those feelings of intimacy back with the Lord and feeling the joy and the closeness and just the fellowship, you know, and, um, and I, I was different and, and I think you can have it more than once. I'm actually reading a book right now called, um, Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. It's a great book. Yeah. Oh my word, isn't it? And I'll tell you, he has a wonderful section about this. He calls it the wall. Mm -hmm. And boy, don't I wish I'd have had that, you know, 18 years ago when I was going through my time. Um, But he brings up a good point because he thinks you can go through it more than once. And when when I read that recently, I agreed because I went through sort of a season. Um, It was somewhat tied to circumstances back in 2013. We had some. Uh, two issues going on with two out of our three kids. and But it was another sort of time of stripping for me that even though I wanted to make that st- season about 
what my children were doing or what they weren't doing. You know, God really came to me and and just, you know, placed in my mind the thought, Gretchen, if I fix them first, you won't change. Mm-hmm. And I was like, huh, you know, because what they were doing was obviously <laughs> in the wrong. So it just seemed so confusing to me that they weren't the issue. And he's like, no, if if I change them first, then you won't change. So he wanted me to get to a place to where I was not as controlling. Um, I had greater faith. I had appropriate expectations. I had not, you know, in the past, I had let my ideals become my expectations and they were totally unrealistic. So he really needed to do a work in me before he worked in my children. And so I feel like that that was almost another time of a dark night in the soul because it lasted for a couple of years and was just excruciating to go through. Um, But boy, it has brought about such freedom in my life, that second go around with suffering that I will say as painful as that was going through that experience with two of my children it was worth it because I am not who I was. And I have never experienced the level of freedom and peace that I get to enjoy now as a norm in my life. Yeah. I really like what you said about squirming, making it last longer. (laughs) That was, that was exactly what I was going through as well. I mean, I'm kind of like you. I, I, I guess a recovering perfectionist might be what you would describe again. I'm not really, good on on using that title like you are but i i really want to perform and measure myself by how i perform and so for me it was all right i i know this has got to be some kind of lesson that you want to teach me lord but what is it so i can learn it and be done with it and and he, yeah <laughs> and and so the entire time was him basically telling me that's not the point <laughs> It's more about you realizing that you can't do this and letting me do it. Right. And and it really reminded me of that psalm, you know, be still and know that I am God. Mm-hmm. And I can remember looking up years ago uh, what those words mean. And the first part means to cease striving. And I am such a striver. I am goal-oriented, performance-based. And so he has had his hands busy with me through the last, you know, 25 years, uh, going on 30 years, probably trying to undo my natural bent toward, you know, uh, performance based relationships, you know, that I have to please him and please others. And, Mm -hmm. you know, that's one of the blessings as you, you know, I'm 51 now, and that's one of the blessings as you start getting older God connects the dots and you begin to realize what about you is not of God and only hurts you. And you begin to recognize it and let go of it. Thanks, Gretchen. There are definitely some lessons that Christians can really only ever learn in the dark night of the soul. And I think God allows us to experience those as a way to help us grow. And so, like Chris mentioned earlier, we really shouldn't try to shy away from those or, or be scared of those dark nights. In, in reality, God's been doing the work in our life through the entire time, and it's really only after we come out of those that we fully understand what God was doing in our lives. So thanks for telling us a little bit about your dark night of the soul, how you came out of it, and the work that God's been doing in your life ever since. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Daily Growth Discipleship Podcast. If you like what you heard today and want to hear more like this, be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Spotify, and you'll stay up to date on every single chapter in the conversation that comes out with Gretchen Fleming. Be sure to come back tomorrow and check out the next chapter in our conversation with Gretchen, where she talks about our need to measure ourselves and why we should stop. Oh, 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 oh.